Hi everyone, this is Eric Vanderwall from Dumb Game Dev, and today we're going to be looking at using some custom playmaker actions that I've come up with for VRTK to do a little more in VR Unity without scripting is the idea here. So I'm, I'm not a big scripter myself, but I have come up with these actions to sort of help myself along, so I've decided to share them out as much as I can. And they will be continuously updated as we go along. So make sure to check back at the GitHub often to see which new updates have come out. And I'll put a link to the GitHub in this little tutorial here. Now what we're going to look at is using a single button on the controller to trigger off an event. And in this case, we're going to be opening up a menu or, you know, just spinning a block, whatever it may be. Because if you know Playmaker, you know that spinning a block or opening a menu is really not that different. What we really want to focus on is getting that button working for the controller so we can just tap the button and some action happens. Now, I have created a empty game object here and called it controller events. And you can call this whatever you want to call it. And I've already started setting up a FSM here. And on my FSM, I created a start state, and I've called this menu off. Um, so let, let's just rebuild this as we go along. So I'll rebuild one here. We'll call it an add state, and we'll call this maybe um, block not spinning. Okay. And if we check back to see what we've done here, we want to deactivate or activate a game object, get the button that is pressed, and um, change or check for a bool change. Okay. So in this case, in the scene, we've got this big old cube. And I've just added a cube to my scene. There's nothing uh, special about it. It has no FSM. It's a little bit big. I'm just going to size this down a bit here. And here's the cube. And what we're going to do is make this cube, say, appear or disappear while we're pressing the button. So when I click the button once, it'll appear. I'll click the button once again, it will disappear. So we're going to go back to the controller events. And on this first event, so we're going to call it block not spinning. We'll just call it block not appeared. How about that? Okay. So I'm just going to move my microphones right in the way. Maybe that's better. OK, block not appeared. So something like in this state, the block is you know invisible. And we are waiting for a Vive button or Vive button to be pressed. Okay, so that's just describing what's happening. So the first action I'm going to have here for my action browser is, um, I always want to say enable, but it's not enable, it's activate. So activate game object. And which game object? We're going to say this cube here. So let's grab the cube and put it on there. So activate game object cube. And it's set to be the bool is checked off as yes. I'm going to say no. So when it first starts, it's going to actually deactivate this cube right away. That's how we want it to be. So the cube is not visible. The next thing we want to do is, what do we want to do? We want to uh, listen for the key down for the Vive controller, in this case using VRTK. So if we check our actions list and you have imported my um, custom actions, you're going to have two sets here. You're going to have the VRTK actions and the VRTK controller actions. So the ones we want are the VRTK controller actions, and these ones are all just about the controller. Now I'm going to use the um, menu button. I like to call it the menu button. It's the top menu button. So if you're on your uh, Vive controller and you reach up to push that round circular button, that's called button two. So button two, um, we have a couple options here. Button two pressed, button two touched. Let's see what it says here. 
um, for button to press, it says this will be true if the button two is held down. Next one says, this will be true if the button two is being touched. So you might not be able to see that my face is probably covering this, but um, you know you can read sort of what these things do. So uh, let's let's get pressed here. So it's going to give me a warning and say that we need the VRTK event or controller event. So it's saying we need the controller, which controller or which sort of thing. So I'm not going to click here to auto generate it because I already have a controller. So I'm going to specify the game object. And I'm just going to go over to my hierarchy and find my VRTK controllers. So I'm going to say take the right controller. Oops, let's lock this FSM in place so it doesn't disappear. So grab the right controller and drag it on there. So this will only activate the right controller. And let's see here. We're going to move this one state down. So we want the activate game object to disappear first, then we want it to listen to the button. And we're not going to set it to positive, but we are going to make a bool for it. Let's have it stored somewhere. So I'm going to make a new variable. I'm going to call it um, right button is down. Okay. And currently it's, of course, if the debug is on here, it's false because the right button is not down. Now, how does this know to move into the next state? We want it to stop here until the button is down. So we're going to do something called, we have right over here, bool changed. So let's look up our actions and type bool changed and add it here. And so which bool are we looking at? We're looking for right button is down, currently false. And if it changed, which event is it going to fire? So I've already got a bunch of events made up. You can make your own event called new event. We'll call this bool has changed. Okay, call it whatever you want. And it's going to say you don't have the event here, so click to make it so. Okay, so now it's here. Let's just delete this one because we oh don't need it anymore. Let's make this a start then. Set this as a start. Delete that sucker. We've created our own new start here. Okay, so it's going to deactivate the game object. It's going to listen for the button down every frame, not just once. And when that happens, the bool will have changed. So it will become true and it will fire off to the next state. The next state is Bing, right over here. It's not added yet. Oh, way over there. Okay. And we want just like this one we've done before. I'm going to delete that one. Okay. So there's a bit of a trick here. We need to add a second state. You, you would think that we can just add like, um, okay, you know, action happen here. And, uh, you know, we have the object, in this case a sphere, reappears, you know, and then that would be it. But, um, and then you would say, okay, finished, so I'm going to finished event and it will go back. Unfortunately, what will happen is this will create a loop event as you touch the uh, trigger or the uh, thumb button down, you push down the, the vibe button, it'll go back and forth real fast and then you'll, you'll have an air out. So we don't want that to happen. We don't want to jump back and forth so fast between the states because it's checking, you know, like, honestly, I don't know how many times, but it, it counts over a thousand times in just one second of you touching down the button, which is much too fast. So this action, you know, that happens here, we don't want to do that yet. We need an intermediate, intermediary state for something to happen. And what we need is a bool test. Okay. It's very similar to the bool change, but it's slightly different. And let's look for the action. Bool test. Okay. And the bool variable that we need to test is right button is down. 
And if it's true, let's just say uh, finished, and we'll go to this next state. Okay, if it's false, I, I have one here called um, a false bool. You could make any, any name you want for this event. So if it's false, oopsie, we just want it to go back, right? And to start re-listening for this um, button, which is a, a bool. So this extra step in here will keep us from bouncing back and forth, blah, 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 blah. So then after this action is finished, um, we could just stay here. Okay, so let's try this. We're, Let's turn on the object right here. So actions, we need uh, activate game object and uh, specify the game object. And this, what we want is this cube and uh, throw it in there. And that should do it. So we should be able to go to the right controller, click, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to move my game screen over here. And uh, let's click play and see if this cube appears. So as you saw, we just clicked the button on the controller and the cube appeared. Now, what if we wanted this cube to sort of appear and disappear and appear and disappear as we push the button. Sort of like a light switch type action, like off and on. And if you have watched the Playmaker tutorials, they have a light switch tutorial, which does go over sort of the, the basics of this. So let's give it a little try and then um, take a look. So basically what we need to do is just reverse the action of what we're doing. We need to go back from where we are to where we were. So in order to do that, Let's, um, we have this uh, activate game object, but we needed to also listen for a button. So let's copy this action, copy selected actions, and then we paste here. So now again, it's listening for the button. And then we also needed to uh, check for a bool change. So we can copy that selected action and paste it here. Uh, paste after. Okay, it says it uh, needs an action, so we'll click here. Okay, bool has changed. Now we still need another intermediary state, so we'll copy and paste this. And if it's true, it will flow back into here. If it's false, it will go back into this waiting state. And if the bool has changed, it will go into here. So let's have a look at this. So it's going to activate the game object and then wait for a button down for on every frame. And if it gets it, the bool will have changed and this will become true. So it will fire off this bool has changed event, which will flow into our bool test. Now, if it's true, it will continue on back to the first state, which will deactivate the game object and then wait. So let's just give it a try. So this is just a mirror of itself. And we'll see if this works. Awesome, now we can see how that one button can uh, trigger an event on and off, or an item on and off. And as you could see, we could use this, for example, for a menu. So we just activate or deactivate a canvas. So I'm not gonna go over setting up an entire canvas, but if we just go to um, UI and create maybe some text, it will Oh, that's not what I want. It's already have to create a new canvas here. 
So UI and create a canvas. There we go. So a canvas, just like anything else, can be uh, activated and deactivated. And we can do that using this here. Okay. So I just wanted to go over how to use these um, the VRTK controller event actions and essentially all of them can work in the same way. All of them are bool actions and they are all uh, slightly different and if you want to know exactly what they do you just um, get the description. So for example I'll add a state here and we'll add one called um, get grip touched and I'll add it here and if we hover over this get grip touched it should tell us a little about it and says this will be true if the grip is touched and let's see get grip pressed will say this will be true if the grip is squeezed about halfway in so these are actually the descriptions from uh, VRTK and they are copied over here to give you a little bit more help about what these do exactly. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully it helped. If you have any questions about this or other things about using these uh, custom Playmaker actions or specific actions you would like to see, go ahead and leave a comment here and hopefully I'll be able to help you with that.